Today on WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about transitioning to employees. Now, you may have employees, you may not, but this is an idea submitted by a viewer, so stay tuned either way to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thanks for hanging out. Uh, hopefully this is uh, enjoyable, or halfway decent, we'll say. But if it's your first time, check it out. There's a lot of episodes, 100 plus episodes. We've been doing this for years now. Check it out, binge all you want. Let me know that you are. And if you are one of the cool kids, one of the nation, somebody who watches every episode, and of course, buys your supplies through me because you're that awesome, What's up? High five to you guys. No, really. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for everybody who buys your supplies for me. It is because of you that I get brand name uh, fruits and vegetables. Maybe. I don't know. I'm running out of things. Somebody just gave me one earlier today that said uh, brand name uh, tires for my kids RC car. So anyway, if you're going to let me put an order in, let me know what kind of brand name things I can buy with the, uh, the uh, cheddar from it. But my number is 862-312-2026. Yes, I'm a rep for Window Cleaning Resource. But if you got questions, just questions in general, let me know. Uh, I want to be more than just a regular salesman for you. 862-312-2026. Now, because of TJ from Squeegee Life Podcast, this is all I see. I see my hands because I talk with my hands. I'm sorry. I try to try to keep it interesting, I swear. Anyway, I got a bunch of shout-outs this morning um jason thomas what's up man uh he is one of the oj og cool kids uh jeremy douglas what's up trevor new the man uh brandon martin what's going on man dan Howe, howie 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 i knew i messed somebody's up but anyway what's up man lorenzo bias what's going on anthony bernardo bernardo it's early i'm messing names up i'm sorry and finally joel jacoby What's up, man? All those are cool kids. If you didn't know them, they're cool kids. They are part of the nation. Know them. Know them. And if you see them, high five them because they're so awesome. Because they put orders in with me. And uh, I pick random people and just say what's up. So those are the guys. But today, we're talking about transitioning from yourself to employees. Or having a job to being a business owner. Now, we got this idea from two guys. By the way, thank you to like the 50 people who submitted ideas. Um, thank you. If, if you have show ideas too, shoot them in my text, uh, shoot them in my email, post them on Facebook, whatever, tag me in them or uh, yeah. But uh, this is from Larry uh, Micah, Micah and uh, Josh uh, Luzius. L- Luzius. Man, my names are just not there. What's up? Larry and Josh, what's up? Thank you guys for these ideas. I kind of combined them into one show, but it is transitioning from uh, no employees to employees. Basically, from being a employee yourself to being a business owner. Now, this episode may not be interesting to some of you. It may not be interesting to people who have a business with tons of employees and may already know it. You may actually still get something out of it. But if you're somebody who's like, hey, I'm completely happy not ever having employees and doing all the work myself, that's completely fine too. Don't feel like any, there's there's no wrong way to do this. There's only the way that you do it. And it's because it's your business, it's always the right way. But if you are looking to have employees or go that way, or even maybe someday go that route, there's a lot of things that go into it. A lot of things. Now, your first employee is a little bit easier because you kind of can get into it with just one. You only have to worry about it. Maybe it's a part-time helper. Maybe it's a family member or a kid. But the big thing is there's a lot of reasons to do it. There's a lot of ways to kind of get into it and some things to think about that you may not really have thought about before. The big one, the first one, is uh, what are the benefits to employees? Like, why have employees? And, and some of you don't think this way, um, you know, maybe because you're just busy, that's the only thing you think about. But let me explain this. You can never grow 
past a certain point without employees because there's only so much of your time. That's a true statement. It doesn't mean you have to. Maybe you make $100,000 a year and you're totally happy doing that. It's awesome money. All by yourself, no headaches, no employees to deal with, nobody ever calls out sick. It's awesome, right? The downside to that is you don't get to take a vacation unless you make no money. It's really nice to uh, make money on vacation. You're on vacation, you're like, ah, I just still had a $1,500 day. You didn't do anything. That's kind of nice. Um, any corporation or company that is of any size has to have employees. Having employees opens up a huge door of revenue stream, but also uh, service also shortening your schedule because if you are booked out two months, three months right now, you're going to lose work that way, right? You can shrink that down. If you got three months of work, if you have two people instead of one, now you got a month and a half of work, right? And I know it slows down and we'll get to that, but that's a huge benefit to having employees. Uh, employees themselves continue to make sure everything happens no matter what else is going on. Now, they're sucky employees, don't get me wrong. But for you to be able to go on vacation, go to conferences, uh, go and sell and do your own thing and get all of the work and plan it line. There's so many benefits. So many benefits. But again, don't think that I'm telling you that's the way it has to be or even should be. I'm just telling you the benefits to having it. It's up to you to decide if you want to do that or not. But those are the benefits kind of in itself to uh, having employees. Um Another big question that you have to think about is when is it time? That's the biggest one, I think. Because if you get employees that are not able to be kept, it doesn't make any sense that you even got employees. What do I mean by that? How do we keep an employee? Think about this. If you worked for somebody else and you worked for a couple months and all of a sudden a couple months you got no work, that kind of isn't a job. That's kind of not... You can find the right guy who wants to do that. But for the most part, people want to be employed. They want to work there. They want to get hours. Now, in my days, I've hired hundreds of employees. And there are some of them that are very happy with being sent home early. And there's some of them that want to make more money. There's a yin and yang. So finding the right employee to do that is key. Um, but when is it time to have your first employee? When is it time to find an employee? Now you're never, especially in our business, you're never gonna go from no employees to employees and have them work 40 hours a week every week forever. Like that's really, really hard. That means that you have to be working 40 hours a week every single week, all year long, and you can hand that off to them, right? And at that point, now you've freed yourself up and we'll get to that there, but you, part of your job is selling work. You only have one employee that is maxed out because you were maxed out, and now you need to have another employee. If you're pulling yourself out of the field, if you're going to still be an employee in work, and you're bringing somebody else in, now you have 20 hours to them, 20 hours to you. Now there's room to expand, but no time to necessarily go out and find it. So it's a super big balance. When I started my company like 15 years ago, I hired an employee before my, right after my first job, I had my first employee. I did one job, I'm like, this is boring without somebody else. And I had a, a guy that was friends with my brother that I knew who just wasn't working at the time. I said, hey man, you wanna, you wanna do this? What I, or, I did it totally wrong. Um, you know, I didn't uh, do it perfectly as far as how we did it, you know, in the beginning. But I could tell you a lot of things that changed right away is having somebody out there in the field. Now, at that time, I was out in the field with somebody and myself. So I was a field tech with a field tech. You could do it those two different ways. Once I got to the point where I hired a crew, meaning my second guy, it removed me from the field. And if I was removed from the field, that allowed me to do some other things. So that's really the big transition is going from um, one employee to two employees because now it removes you all together. Just getting the first employee ends up being more of a helper because as you're growing, your business is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you're working more and more and more, but I don't know, not one window cleaner who works 40 hours a week every single week all year long. 
If that's you and you're on YouTube, well, comment down below. I want to hear it actually because that is freaking awesome. Um, but I don't know of any because there's winter, right? We're super, super busy until winter kicks in. Uh, I'm in North Carolina and still in the middle of winter is slow. There's still holiday weeks where you come off of Christmas to New Year's. You're probably not doing 40 hours that week. Maybe you are, right? So there's a lot of times where um, there's slow times and there's busy times and it's kind of that juggle, which is what small business is anyway. It's always going to be kind of that juggle, right? But that's when I start realizing I need somebody is when I'm going to work and I'm working so much that I can't get everything done the way that I want to get done. Now, of course, we all are doing what we're doing because we don't want to be in a cubicle, right? We don't want to work for the man. Some of us have, uh, you know, issues working for other people. But uh, a big thing is that if I am out in the field, say even 40 hours in the busy time, I'm working nine to five. When am I doing my paperwork? When am I getting all of my calls done and my new sales done for route? And when am I doing my bookings? And when am I doing my customers and emails? Now all of a sudden it's at night. So if I'm cleaning nine to five, you're not done until nine. Now you're doing nine to nines. Well, if you have a family, that's tough. Even if you don't have a family, that's tough because you're just going to burn yourself out. If you burn yourself out, then you're no good to anybody, right? So once you start getting to be that point where I need some free time, now all of a sudden working 40 hours is 20 hours for you, 20 hours for the other person. Even if you're not shortening your schedule, you're flipping that and now getting it done twice as fast, which is great because it allows you to open up your schedule to do other things. But the big thing is you have to find an employee that wants 20 hours. If you throw them into just 40 hours, like I said, now you're in that same pickle of you can't advertise, you can't get new work, you can't bust your hump getting more work for a guy who's already full. You've allowed yourself to now do all the office stuff, which is great, but you've still hindered yourself. So finding your first employee, the biggest thing you should look for is a part-time employee. Find somebody who's cool with part-time. Maybe they got a hobby or something they do on their own and you want them for a few hours a day or a few days a week or something like that. You got to be very, very open and don't over-promise an employee. If somebody comes in and go, hey, listen, it's part-time right now, but in a week or two, man, we'll be full-time but you've never been full-time, don't tell them that because now you're just going to piss them off and start a, you know, uh, kind of a a lying spree that they're not going to trust anything you say. So be upfront. There are people out there who are cool with working 20 hours, doing things like we're expanding. We're trying to get it bigger. This number's going to go up, but right now it's 20. You know, as much work as I can give you, I'm going to, you know, you could certainly be upfront and honest about that. And there's some things that they could do by themselves that free you up. And that's totally cool too. But once you need to get a break, once you need some more time and you need to magically make that happen, that's when employees, that's the time. So you need to look at what you're doing now and be like, all right, is it time? Am I, am I there? Here's the other thing. In the busy time is when you're going to feel this. And right now we've been busier, a lot of us, and I know this sucks for you guys out there who are still not quite uh, up to par. You will be there. I'm telling you, everybody is having the best spring they've ever had because of this whole thing is now coming to fruition where some places are still slow, but some people are just, everybody's at home. They're doing nothing but looking at their windows, right? But right now, super, super busy. We know it's going to taper off from where it is at now. It's not going to obviously stay this way. That's just not how it's going to happen. Hopefully it does. But you want to also be in a time where it makes sense to do that. Now, if you're not working 40 hours a week, you can give somebody 20, but maybe they're only getting 15 because you were doing 30. You have to kind of take that math and change it. Um, What I do for um, employees, basically, is I will make sure that they have the hours that they need or want while minimizing my hours in the field, that's how I would like to transition out. Or I'd like to see you guys transition out if you're trying. 
But remember, there's two parts to a company. There's the owner and there's an employee. And if you're an employee of your company, you're not the owner, right? That's kind of weird to even hear because you're like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm the employee and the owner. Yes and no. There's a lot of things that have to happen that we do as business owners. Think about that. When you have a small business and you're running no employees or that one uh, helper, you are the HR department. You're the marketing department. Your sales and advertising, your uh, you know prepping things for the next day and doing your website and your printing up any type of flyers. You're also contacting you know SEO people. Hopefully you're using Just a Monk. By the way, if you use Just a Monk, tell him I said hi. Uh, but he's absolutely awesome. Uh, he's an SEO. Search him on Facebook. I think you can find him. But um, if you're doing all of that and trying to clean. Now you have 16 jobs, right? You have more hats than anybody. None of them are going to get done properly, right? There's just not enough time. You're going to burn yourself out and hate life. But once you start being the owner, you then pick and choose different things. And as this whole thing goes on, you know you're going to have more employees if you're going this route. You know you're going to have an office goddess, or you're going to have um, some kind of uh, office help, phone staff, sales department, that type of thing, where it takes big chunks of your day and gives it to somebody else, which allows you to then focus on the other things. That's how companies grow, right? After I got staff for cleaning, I got crews, and then I got a route guy. Then my route guy was his own crew, and then I had crews for residential and commercial, and then I got an office person. Like, eventually you have to piece these all things off because there's so much work that comes in. The bigger and busier you are, the more work you have. Think about how much work you have now uh, outside of cleaning. Think about how much work you have. That number, when your company is twice the size it is now, three times, four times, ten times, there's ten times more work outside of cleaning with a company that's ten times the size. It's just how it is. Right? If you're doing 10 times as much work, now you have 10 times more sales you need to get out there and bookings to do because you have to keep those people busy and keep the books full. They don't just become full. You have to book them. Right? Advertising, ch- <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Advertising changes. Um, you know, payroll needs change. You know, and all of a sudden you got a staff of 10 guys. Those people all need payroll. They need to be paid properly, and you do not have the time to make sure 10 people are getting paid correctly. Now you hire in a temp agency for payroll. See, as this grows, you continue to find areas, and it was very beneficial for me to find in areas that I did not like doing. So I didn't like uh, payroll. <laughs> And I didn't like uh, office work in general, like uh, the normal, you know, bureaucracy stuff. Just throwing my phone over. I didn't like that. So it was very easy to kind of go and find somebody who would take that burden off my shoulders, if you will. So that's kind of what it is. That's what you're doing. That's when your timing is right and why you're doing it. But the big thing then is what becomes your job after you have employees? And here's the difference. If you're an owner operator that is going to have one helper, you're probably going to be in the field with them. So you're going to be a cleaner slash owner. Okay. As you move out of that and as you become uh, in the office altogether, now your job completely changes because you're not out there cleaning windows. Cleaning windows is not the most important part of your business. Running the business is. You can find somebody to clean your windows. Right? So... Once you become out of the office, your job now, 100% is to make your staff busy. That's your only job. And the only way you do that is by building your company, getting new work, getting the advertising out, getting the everything to run smoothly so that these guys that are out there doing your work, doing the cleaning, are busy. You want them so busy that they're doing 40 hours a week, 45 hours a week, so you have to hire somebody else on. Right? That's this growth thing. And it all becomes your responsibility as the owner. So what's your job? What is your job? What should you be doing? You should still be working eight hours a day, every single day, on other things. 
And if you think right now that you don't have eight hours a day of like other stuff, you will. I'm telling you. You will have so much stuff that you're bringing either work home or working on the weekends or just like anything, you're, you're behind, right? But you're going to have the work. You're going to have the sales. You're going to have the marketing material. Even if you use WCRA's printed materials, which are super easy, they change them, do the editing. You still have to have them printed. If you're doing EDDM, you have to have them batched with cover sheets. If you're doing uh, SEO work through Justin Monk, who I talked about a minute ago, that's awesome. He's going to do almost everything, but there's still stuff you could do. There's still posting on Craigslist. They're still posting free things, looking for people to hire, putting job applications out there, searching government uh, bid contracts, contacting property maintenance companies and um, cleaning companies to see if they are subbing any window cleaning work, doing unsolicited bids, bidding route work. There's so many things that'll keep you busy. I promise you, once you pull yourself out of the field, you will find eight hours a day of things to do that you just didn't know that you even could do before because they weren't getting done. That's your job now. Your job now is to make it so busy that they can't keep up, that you need to hire more people. That's your job. Another big thing you got to do with employees, especially if you're new in getting employees, is keep them happy. It is not... You are more... Okay, warning. If you're listening right now and you want to comment on this, go YouTube comment. Uh, post the video in Facebook and comment. Tell me your thoughts. I want to hear them. You don't necessarily need to send me an email telling me how unpleased you are because I want to have a conversation out in public. But it employees, you should be more grateful of an employee than they are of you. And that is the hardest lesson you can learn because first off, you're like, man, I'm paying this guy. He should love me. He should be... Here's what happens. If you stopped paying him and you stopped signing the check, he will go somewhere else. Done. All right, well, that job sucked. That boss was a jerk. Gone. What do you do if they leave? You are SOL. You now have two guys worth of work, plus all the work you were doing in the office, with no people. Understand the fact that an employee is needed more than needs you. 100%. 100% agree on that. Now, do they have you kind of by the short hairs in that? Yeah, technically. They don't want to lose their job either, so you're both working for a positive gain. But the big thing is, is that I would do anything for an employee to make them happy. And that's what you have to do. You have to have happy employees. If you don't focus on your employee's happiness, then the amount of money you make them is the, or the amount of money that you pay them is the only thing that there's going to keep them there. And there is no real amount of money because the next guy is going to pay him more. Amazon can pay you 16, 17 bucks an hour to pick stuff off shelves, right? We can't match that in our industry. Don't say, oh, they should be lucky to have a job. They could be unemployed. No, no, you're doing it wrong. If you don't focus on them and keep them happy, they will leave you and you will be screwed. Not them. You will be in a very, very big world of hurt. So keep them happy. Do what you can to make an awesome environment. Pay them as much as you can. Throw little bonuses. Throw little spiffs. Buy them lunch. Give them ice cold waters every day. Make it so that they love going to work. Because if somebody loves something, they're going to do it even if it sucks. Because they love it. But as soon as something they don't really like sucks, then they're like, this isn't worth it. I'm done with this. I'm done. And now you're the one up to creek without a paddle. So keep your employees happy. Keep them very, very happy. How much does an employee cost? How much does it actually cost to get an employee? Now, we'll talk about the first bit of employees here. When you get your first employee or your your part-time helper, it's not as much because you're sharing a truck, right? They're just jumping in, you're doing the work, that type of thing. It's a very easy and low-cost way to get in. But as soon as you leave that and you go into having them as their own crew, they need their own truck which has their own insurance, has their gas. You need to make sure that they're logoed on letter, they have uniforms, they each have their own equipment. A starter kit costs you uh, 450 bucks about, you know? Not including pure water, that's just traditional stuff. For every truck that you bring on, you now have to buy ladders. You need to buy the truck equipment, so a vacuum, generator, whatever you keep on each truck. 
as it grows, each employer, each crew costs you money. Now that's all in return because of course you're making a percentage of everything that they're bringing in. It's freeing you up to go sell more work and get more employees. But it does cost you something. That first helper is going to be the least expensive. The most expensive on top of all that is going to be when you hire your first office staff. Office staff uh, does not make you any money. Yes, they make everything so much easier. And yes, they book things. And yes, they can upsell and all that. But here's the thing. When an office person is just doing the filing and the uh, packets and the stacking, they're not making you anything. So now you take a piece of everybody else's money that they've made you and you give it to this other person. That's the most expensive employee you could have. So make sure the timing is right for that. It's the most freedom feeling, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's my best decision was to get an office person. And I actually got an office person who was cool with part-time uh, to start. And uh, she was my wife's friend. So she just came in. We knew each other already. It was like, hey, cool. This is what we're doing. She was super, super detail oriented. It was great. It was amazing. Best employee I ever had was that for sure. But it costs you the most money. Getting in your first helper, all you need to do is get some gear. And I'm pretty sure you have gear lying around that you can get them into having some used gear if you're trying to do it on the cheap. But getting them their own gear, new, nice set, allows them to feel like they're worth something. So go out there, buy a, a starter kit for them. Right? It will really, really will make them very happy to do that. And uh, gear lasts you know, an X amount of time. So if you get new stuff, that's just going to last that long. But you can call me for that. 862-312-2026. But no, really, uh, I always like to, whenever we brought somebody new on, they got new equipment. Just because I didn't like the whole, you know, the body is still cold and the next one comes in kind of thing where you're getting somebody else's stuff. I mean, for the most part, we would switch some things out. uh, But for the most part, they got new stuff. They got their bin uh, was brand new. Um, if they got the old person's bin, all the labels were taken off and they were put on all new labels and name tags and everything. It felt like theirs. Feel like, hey, you're part of this team. That goes back to keeping them happy too. Uh, but what does it cost? That first one's not going to be much. Just think about it as being that, you know, with new gear clothes and whatever, you could be 500 to $750 to get your first employee. From there, it goes way up. But you could have them for years. They may be helping you do whatever you're doing. Again, if you're working 40 hours, you split it into 20 for both of you. Now you have 20 hours worth of being upselling. Now you could technically get in 40, 50, 60 hours worth of work split between you, still only 30, right? So it's definitely worth it upping your income, upping your jobs to do. And the big thing is when you have employees, there's going to be slow time. And that's the hardest thing to jump around is I try to always give my employees the option. We sit them down, come late uh, fall, and I say, okay, we got to think about winter here. What's the plan? Who wants to be seasonally laid off? And this is when you have multiple people, of course, but who wants to have layoff? Who wants to do snow? Whatever. Some people want layoffs, some people want snow. We did snow work because we were in Wisconsin, but that also entailed cleaning the shop, detailing the trucks, uh, fixing equipment if they're mechanically inclined. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do on top to give them hours. But everything that you do in the slow time is paying them when you're not paying yourself. So it's very, very hard. But keeping them in the slow time means you have to find stuff for them to do. If in your slow time you go weeks without working, maybe it's not time for an employee quite yet. Because if you're going weeks without working, they're not going to go weeks without working. Unless you're doing seasonal unemployment, you certainly can. But that's very hard to be a part-time person and then be laid off. So you got to find the right person for that. But the whole thing is employees. I think employees are great. Um, They suck uh, horribly also. Uh, But... um, it's, it's definitely something to help grow your empire. So think about it. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and thumbs up the video. That would be absolutely awesome. And go ahead and comment down below. I like the conversation. 
Uh, last week, our video actually was uploaded super late. Uh, the, actually, this week it was loaded. Uh, I think on Monday, uh, there was some kind of snafu. So I apologize. But make sure to watch everything and, and, and order your equipment through me. That is my, my cheap and shameless plug. My number is 862-312-2026. Uh, anything, big, small, I get people put in $40 orders, but they put them in through me. It costs you nothing extra, which is awesome, but it makes me some cheddar, right? That's how I survive. That is my only f f form, source, source and form of income put together is sales. So that's why I love helping people. Uh, but if you need some kind of sales or something order put in, that's what I'm here for, man. Let me put those orders in for you. 862-312-2026. Save it in your phone. My name is Jersey. That's a cell phone. You can call me, text me, put everything in your cart. Just be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. And I can go with that. The code this week um, is going to be new guy. You tell me the code of new guy and I'll get you 5% off your entire order and ship it for free, which is super awesome. I'm just a nice guy. But you have to order through me. Don't put it in yourself and then go, oh, by the way, I did this order. Take some money off. That's not how that works. Let me put the order in 862-312-2026 and I'm done shamelessly plugging myself. Go out there on your own. Think about if you do want to start employees. If you already have employees, tell me where I messed up. Tell me where the important things lie. Most importantly, go out there and be epic.